Please help me welcome to the PaleyFest stage, first up, Petro Solano, played by El Groblas. <laughs> Michael Cordero, played by Brett Dyer. <laughs> Everybody's Ideal Abuela, Alba Villanueva, played by Yvonne Call. <laughs> Siomara Villanueva, played by Andrea Nevedo. My Brogelio and yours, Rogelio de la Vega, played by Jaime Camiel. <laughs> Next up, we have Rafael Solano, Justin Baldoni. Jane herself, Gina Rodriguez. <laughs> Executive producer and showrunner, Jenny Ehrman Snyder. Snyder Ehrman. <laughs> yeah. And last but not least, executive producer, Ben Silverman. Not to start with a bad pun, Ben, but let's talk about how the conception of this show happened for you. <laughs> Obviously, it was adapted from the Venezuelan series, right? How did you sort of decide to bring it to America? Well, I was sitting with a friend, Gary Pearl, who had just uh, gone into business with the Venezuelan network that had produced the original show and been very successful with it. And he was showing me his catalog of different shows that he was involved with, and in the catalog was a poster and a title of a kind of smiling face in one of the version, and I was, I said, that's the one I want. <laughs> Whatever it takes, tell me what it's about, what's, <laughs> what's happening. They really thought it was an immaculate concept. They believed that over all those episodes, and then started getting into the concept and just thought it was so compelling, so real, and also had an opportunity to remain connected to the Latin experience, which is part of why I thought that um, title and show was so specifically great to adapt for the United States. Jenny, what excited you about this possibility of this story? Well, when I heard the log line, you know, a girl gets accidentally artificially inseminated. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I said, no, I can't do that. <laughs> That's what it's about. Um, and so I sat with it over the weekend, and it just started to emerge as this fairy tale about how one moment can just change your whole life. And I thought if I could figure out a way to get us to that one moment where she's accidentally artificially inseminated, like, we could have this just, th there would be a shift in tone and that we, can, we could go into all these different directions. And I got excited about the form of the telenovela and how we could pay homage to that and uh, just sort of captured my imagination as a modern fairy tale of sorts. When you're starting to create a show that's called Jane the Virgin, and you know that on some level, like, you have to find the perfect person for that role. I mean, how stressful is that as executive producers to be like, if we mess this one thing up, there's a possibility that all of the dominoes could go toppling down. We were stressed. Yes, super stressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, super stressed, except, like, Gina was the third person to come in. And uh, so... Uh, and Ben had called because he had seen her in a, a film in Sundance, and our casting directors also said, you have to see this girl. So I wasn't stressed for that long, <laughs> you know, because yeah. I saw her. And I, well, you did cry. Yeah, I did cry in the audition. And then, um, <laughs> I'm always crying, but then um, I brought, I remember bringing home my computer and just showing my husband and being like, look at her. I mean, look at her. And we watched it like five times that night. And... Woo! Woo! I mean, the truth, I, she really gave, the performance that you see in the pilot is the performance she came in and auditioned with. Yeah. I mean, there was no changes. There's no changes to make, so uh, it was awesome. Gina, <laughs> uh, you you've talked about this a little bit, but when you got that script and you saw the potential in Jane as a woman, you know, on television, what made you feel so strongly that it was a role you had to play? 
Well, I mean, I fell in love with Jane. Jane was incredible. Jane was a woman I wish I was more like. And <laughs> <laughs> saying a lot about me, huh? Um, and, uh, you, you seldom get the opportunity to even audition for a woman that is so strong and empowering and fearless and driven and a virgin. <laughs> 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 so, so, but to me, it also had the aspect of, you know, I'm, I'm, my parents are from Puerto Rico. I grew up in Chicago. I, yes, yeah. yes, Chi Town. Uh, One. So I grew up in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> the, the seven people that clapped. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, being, being a girl that has that dual identity, that has, you know, a grandparents that speak Spanish, and my parents spoke Spanish and English, and, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Spanish! It's gonna be like everything I say. <laughs> 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 exactly, like, why not, why not? Um, I found an opportunity to really speak about a subject matter and talk about it, a culture that doesn't really get recognized and definitely doesn't get recognized as, you know, as the as the hero, as the one that gets to like lead an awesome pack. And for me, I was just, I was like, who is Jenny? Who is this woman that wrote this? Because she is brilliant. And, and then I saw her in the room, and I was like, you, my friend. <laughs> um, she had said, she was like, I'll see you again. And I was like, if I don't get that on paper, <laughs> I'm gonna stalk you. <laughs> I just want you to know that. But, you know, yeah, it was an opportunity to talk about being a woman, being strong, talk about women choices. It was an opportunity to talk about the dual identity that's so prevalent in this, in this country, 54 million plus. And, and I got to be a strong woman. And I, I just knew that from that pilot, there was something very special and that this woman that was writing, she was brilliant and that she was gonna send me on a brilliant journey that was gonna be fun and awesome. Yes. The, you know, one of the things that I think is amazing about what you've done, yes, the show is called Jane the Virgin, but I mean, this is one of the strongest ensembles I feel like that is currently on television. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I think it's and I think it's really impressive that in less than a season, you've been able <laughs> to create incredibly defined characters for an entire family, an extended family. I mean, obviously, Gina's casting was important, but how difficult was it to do the, everybody we're seeing on this stage right now? I mean, how hard were the rest of these roles, too? <laughs> I mean, every role had its specific challenges, and and you know, you, you have to you had to start from Jane because who's Jane will def determine who her mother is and who her mm -hmm. grandmother is and all of that. So so we started there, and um, you know, we did uh, we we had uh, uh, Andrea and and Gina uh, read together, and it was just like exactly exactly what I was hoping and dreaming about. And um, you know, I feel like I get to discover new sets of skills that all of our characters have. I mean, you know, I, I didn't know, for instance, that when we would, starting off, that, that Petra would be such a well of comedy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, you know, and, and, and you, just, you guys just saw the beginning of the bromance between uh, uh, Michael and Rogelio, you know, and... <laughs> and, you know, so... <laughs> And right from that, there's a scene in episode seven where the two of them interacted and, and you were <laughs> warning him that you, you'd slept with more women than he ever would. <laughs> and, um, you know, you start to put different people in different combinations yeah. and see where the comedy comes from and where the drama comes from. And I do feel so you know, lucky that we have this deep bench of excellent actors. And I feel like there's so many more combinations I want to see. You know, I want to see what uh, you know, Petra and Rogelio what they yes. talk about. <laughs> yeah, a... The world will explode with energy. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> um, you know, so, so I think you try to create really specific people and then try to put yeah. them together and have them combine. And it's great because now that you're in the season, you know your actor strengths. I would imagine you probably wouldn't have written what we just saw, you know, Michael doing impressions if it wasn't yeah. something great to bring to the table. Yeah. Exactly. What about the exactly. dancing? And I mean all the yeah. dancing, so many things. Um, Brett, in your impressioning, have you developed any <laughs> impressions of anyone else who's on the stage right now? Have you turned the impressions oh, on your uh -oh. co-stars yet? Um, you know what? Honestly, not yet. 
Um, but uh, um, now you got a project. But I'm gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do next week. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, <laughs> how, as an actor, how exciting is it to be on a show where the showrunners recognize things that you can bring to the table and say, "Let's put you in the show more." It's pretty sweet. I never thought I'd make a face in a show, and Jenny gave me that opportunity to be Lizard Man. <laughs> So well, thank you, Jenny. <laughs> but I feel like there's so many opportunities in this in this amazing you know journey that we're on to play things because of the fantasy, because of the magical realism. We get to go into so many different places. Not to mention she does drama and comedy yeah. so well that we all get to stretch our wings in both of those. And as an actor, it's like you know, it's going to the gym without going to the gym because Lord knows I don't go to the gym. <laughs> 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 I do squats on set. Though. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> There's actually a really fast forward video, exercise video on your Instagram. Uh, yes. I feel, like, I feel like I want to use talking about going to the gym as a natural segue to talk to Justin because <laughs> I feel like it's just. It should just happen. The he has, has weights in, in, his, the, in his room. He has weights in his room. The universe has provided. Room. Yes. yes. Um, you know, Brett, Brett uses those more than I do. Well, yeah. you know what? I, I lift sandbags on set. There yeah. are these sandbags that lay around, and I just lift those all day. You know they're, <laughs> there. You know they're there to hold stuff down. They take off your shirts. They only work for shirt. Justin, obviously. That's why the lights oh, are no. falling yeah. on set. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but Justin, when we were talking about sort of, you know, a character being something on day one that they are so now not halfway through, I think, you know, Raphael could have been a very straightforward sort of love interest. And we've seen so much color from him in terms of his hopes and his dreams. What have you enjoyed about his, you know, at now it's still pretty short, but even just the journey you've had over the first season with him? It's been, it's, it's been humbling. And it, like Jenny writes these characters that always have a place to go. So none of us know where our characters are going, but she gives us these little kernels in each episode that give us a chance to explore different aspects of what it is to really be a human. So while it's like you have all these crazy comedy moments, it's all rooted in this like reality that is, well, what is this person really feeling if this stuff's happening? So then the extreme comes from that. So for me, you know, getting a chance to react to this baby and, you know, people dying and getting you know, uh, impaled on ice sculptures <laughs> and my, you know. It's a regular old yeah, Thursday. Just, yeah, just like a, for Raphael, it is. It, sometimes in the episodes, I go, my God, what else could he deal with? Yeah. <laughs> like, it takes 20 minutes to just talk about what his Thursday was like. Um, but she, she always allows it to come back to the heart of what he's really going mm -hmm. through. And like, just like, for instance, getting to explore this relationship. You're dealing with two people who, like, really don't know each other that are forced to date while they're having a baby. <laughs> and they never had sex, <laughs> right? So... <laughs> Season two. <laughs> First episode. Hey! hey, come on! <laughs> it's OK. I already know all of you are Brett, team Michael. Brett's here. <laughs> yeah, Brett's come on, here. man. Hey, I see take your shirt off again. We'll think about it. <laughs> Speaking, speaking of which, uh, I, I, think, I think it's bad to lie to the audience. Uh, the audience should know that whenever you see Justin's body, <laughs> it's my body that <laughs> <laughs> They photoshopped true. my body into His Justin's head on body. your body. Yes. <laughs> it's nice that you're such a team player, Jaime. I feel like that's like really cool. You know? That's how, we, how exactly. much we love each other. There's plenty of Jaime to go. No, it's right. true. <laughs> you know, when we're talking about characters that have evolved over a short season, I don't know if anyone has revealed themselves to be the well of magical insanity like Rogelio has. I mean, <laughs> this character yes, is, is like the <laughs> egotistical hashtag loving gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. He really, really is. Yeah. I mean, Jaime, for you, does it feel like you're sort of just like on a playground with this guy because uh, yes. anything is on the, is like possible. <laughs> I think I think uh, yeah, I'm very privileged. I'm very privileged to be interacting with this amazing group of actors because then Rogelio would be nothing without them. But uh, but I'm I'm also very lucky <laughs> because uh, Jenny writes Dije algo mal? No, no. <laughs> Rogelio line. Jenny, <laughs> yes, thank you. Jenny and her team of writers, they're so brilliant. I'm very lucky because they write this beautiful character that is, you know, egocentric, crazy, vain, out of this world. But at the same time, he has a lot of heart. Mm -hmm. 
and he's very sincere and he yeah. loves family and, and he has beautiful heartfelt scenes with Gina characters and Andrea and, and everybody. So I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky to, to be playing an all round, uh, you know, complete character. Absolutely. And lavender is your color. You and lavender, lavender is yeah. my color. You pop in lavender. Lavender. Is it, has this been a good discovery and for I, you how well I you can do pull off lavender? Popping peach in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or in any color for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rogelio. Thank you. <laughs> you know, those classic Rogelio lines, I feel like, it, I mean, he already has a Twitter account that's devoted to him, which is yeah. very impressive. I know who writes that Twitter account. For uh, the certain amount of money, I will tell you who's in charge of that account. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just take up a collection in the theater <laughs> at some point. Um, do you have any favorite, Jaime, do you have any favorite sort of Rogelio lines, whether it's... Oh, my God. It's so, <laughs> so difficult to pick. I, 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 all of them. I mean, Jenny, you write them. Tell them. It's like yeah. uh, Rogelio's hog is like a rabbit food, probably. <laughs> Uh, a rabbit lucky like rabbit foot. Yeah. Of a rabbit. Ra uh, oh. What is it? Uh, soft. Soft. And soft. And soft uh, whatever, and lucky and soft to the touch. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Very good lines. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the writers' room, what is it like? Is it sort of like let's think of the most insane thing that someone could never get away with saying, make him say it, and because of what Jaime brings to it, you'll genuinely believe that it's like a heartfelt sentiment. Yeah, I mean, kind of. I mean, we, we try to give him what he wants and then how he would approach it. Um, and, you know, I think he really just genuinely knows he's just an incredible human being. So <laughs> he's, not, he's not trying to brag. He's, he uh, understands not, every, you know, not everybody has the gifts that he has. Yeah. And he wants to share them. And, uh, right. Indeed. <laughs> but you know, it, you know, he 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 comes from a good place, and yeah. I feel like as long as we keep his heart, you know, and, and he cares for himself as much as you guys care for him. <laughs> I like that. No, it's true, and I think you guys have done an amazing job about reinforcing the heart on the show. And when I think about the emotional weight of the show, I think of the Vian Wave of women. I think there is. Yes. I mean. That dynamic on television, first of all, is something I feel like we don't see enough, where it's a loving, supportive environment between women, and I think that's incredible, family or not. Mm -hmm. um, but to have this insanely loyal, strong family bond. Andrew, I mean, you know, it's something that I feel like you don't see very often on television. When you read that in a script and continue to see it week after week, how exciting is that? Um, it's super exciting to me, and um, the fact that it reminds me of my own family, um, I have a strong maternal family. Uh, we were mostly raised by women. Um, so it's very reflective of what you see on Jane the Virgin and the interactions that we have, um, the, the fights that we have and the making ups that we have. And um, I'm the product of a single mother, um, born and raised in the South Bronx. Um, the struggles I saw that my mother go through. Woo! All right. Woo! The seven people. Say that again. Also class. Same seven. seven. <laughs> yes, the same seven. Same seven from Chicago. They're just like city. Um, but uh, <laughs> the fact that I get to reflect um, and to represent mi gente, so to speak, and um, <laughs> and also single mothers out there, I get to represent them too and give them sort of a spotlight and, and to show how hard they work. And that is reflected through the Alba character and through the Jane character as well, how, what hard workers they are, how conscientious they are, how intelligent they are, and um, loyal they are to their family. And I'm so proud and honored that I get to be part of that face that is reflecting a positive image to single women out there, single parents out there, Latinos out there, and a diverse, diverse cast. To be here, really. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> you know, it, it's you guys have done an amazing job in just the short amount of time the show has been on. When we watch the episode and, you know, Abba and so fight, I get upset. Like, I'm like, please, just, yeah, just why are you fighting? It's unsettling. It's if my own family was fighting. And Yvonne, I'm curious, I mean, was that dynamic between the three of you there from day one? Yes, because, you know, Alba had some uh, expectations from her daughter. And uh, when she got pregnant, everything turned to, um, Hell, in a way, for her, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> because she had to support her, and then the kid too, you know. I am just so happy that I represent the thousands of immigrants who come to this country and work so hard huh, to be part of the fabric of what composes America, 
And that's what we're represented by here. And that's what I loved about Jenny's writing in this, that it wasn't about being Latino. It is about being Latino, but it isn't. It is about that we're part of the fact, we're part of the fabric, we're part of the nation with our work and we contribute. Yeah. Latina president of the United States. And also the fact that I speak Spanish only oh, after I spent so much money as an actor, training, uh, but it's okay because I'm representing. <laughs> Representing a demographic that is really real, that exists, and, and we have to address that. And, and, and also the fact that I am illegally in the country, I mean, Alba. <laughs> <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Let's clarify that, okay? Run, now run, run! <laughs> Yvonne is Puerto Rican, Alba is Venezuelan, so I'll... <laughs> so the fact that she is illegally here puts a face on also all the hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants that are here that are not criminals. You know, that... Yeah. That are hardworking people. So there's a lot of aspects for me personally in this teleplay that uh, touch home and my heart because I think we're doing something important with it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I was beside myself when Ava got pushed down the stairs. Um, <laughs> that, was, Tell me about it. that was a very unsettling moment for me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was worth it because the medical repatriation episode, I think, speaks to exactly what you're talking about. And it's one thing to have these characters and to not use them as a platform to address these issues that you're talking about. I think would be insane. And I mean, for you guys, why was it so important to right out of the gate almost, you know, have this immigration uh, reform sort of conversation? For me, it's, it's so central to the lives of the, the community Characters. that we're representing and that, uh, and it's a part of the family. And, you know, I feel like if things are just politicized, then you take them as almost sometimes medicine. But if things are, are, if you attach to the people and you're, you're suddenly thinking, Alba, this is a woman who has worked so hard and here's her family and she's worked so hard. I feel like, you know, that, that's the hope is that then you're attaching it to personal experiences and you're not preaching, but you are, you know, I feel like every t television show has a point of view. And so on our television show, we're overt about it, but every, you know, you're always watching someone's point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and But it's also humanizing. Humanizing. The, the, the experience part. and not making it a, a them a versus them. we. Yeah, where you know, you, you love Alba and you, you are rooting for her, so hopefully, you know, it, it And it was it something we found out was true. Right. Yeah. And a real thing, you know, and so it's a real thing that happened to our character. Mm -hmm. I, I got a really great tweet during that episode uh, from someone that said, you know, my daughter is seven years old, this is going to sound like the longest tweet of your life, but this, 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 she summed it up. She summed it up in 140 characters. Of um, my daughter is, you know, seven years old. We watched Jane together, and she's asking about immigration. I don't know what to say. And I was like, what's beautiful, again, in 140 characters of us, what's beautiful is that now you can learn together. Right. Right? And so it's not about telling her something she should hear. It's about learning together. And I think that education is a means to a, a, you know, to, to wipe out ignorance, to wipe out uh, t intolerance. And, you know, I think that Jenny does a really great job of not just talking about immigration, but, you know, same-sex marriage and sexual equality. You know, I think she talks about women's rights, reproductive rights, without saying it's black or white, it's yes or no, but more so now talk about it. What's your opinion? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be ours. It doesn't have to be some. It could be your. It could be your opinion, and we could do it in a way that's light and fun and funny and and sometimes dramatic, so it really hits home. But we do it with our beautiful vehicle of art, and we do it in a way to actually create peace and tolerance through art, and that is awesome. You know, we get to do it laughing. Yeah. And you know, what's great about it is the show represents so many people's experiences. I mean, I'm thinking with Petra, you know, there's another sort of immigrant story on some level. It's <laughs> traumatic yeah. in the setting. But it, I mean, it is. And you know, you know, I think what you've done that's been so great is this is someone who on paper could have been like a mustache twirling, not the mustache, <laughs> yeah. but you know, like a old timey villain. Yeah. And you know, you really haven't 
at all been that character. I think you've really turned her into such a flesh and blood woman who you really understand these horrifying things that are motivating her to make these terrible choices. Thank you. <laughs> I, Thank you. I, I know. We keep coming back to the compliments. Okay, There's yes. more compliments. There was a compliment. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. I think that was really one thing that Jenny and I spoke about from the very beginning when we met just as I was cast. And, and I think it was very important to both of us um, um, for Petra not to be this two-dimensional or, or this classic kind of villain. It was very clear that Petra was going to be the villain of the show, but she's not, she's never what you expect her to be. And like Jenny was mentioning, I mean, she gave me such a gift when she let Petra be funny. And I think specifically <laughs> what makes Petra funny is, I mean, the brilliance of this show is really that Jenny wrote these realistic, grounded, um, down-to-earth characters and is throwing them into these larger-than-life telenovela huge situations and is really forcing them to deal with that, right? And that's really where the comedy lies. And Petra specifically takes everything so seriously, which is what really makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and I think, I think that, that Jenny's brilliant writing and our incredible team of writers managed to make us laugh and cry within the same few minutes. And I felt that from the moment I read the pilot. Well, I was like, when it's a pilot, I, I, when it's a script and it hasn't even been filmed yet, and I'm already laughing and crying within the next, within the first three minutes. How? I mean, this is purely genius. And then I got to the Latin narrator, of course, Anthony, which was yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Was say, Amazing. The, I feel, you know, somebody who makes the show as much as anyone else, Anthony Mendez, who does the oh. incredible voice. Yes, yeah. 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 When you were conceptualized, did you envision that the narration was going to be such a huge part of the show when you were writing the pilot? I had, when I was writing the pilot, I kept, I remember I, I would turn in the outline to, and usually, you know, the studio network says, you know, okay, go to the script. And I would, they'd say, go to script, and I'd be like, I'm not ready yet, something's not right. And I did that a few times. I kept reading, and it was until I cracked Anthony and what our entry point in would be that I felt like it came together. Um, and it and the narration has grown, so you know it was a certain way in the pilot, and then I could feel it functioning, and then now it, it's you know yes. one of our full character. He's a character. He's a, he's a complete character. multi-dimensional character. With points of view and all that, and, and that's he's incredible. And he's too. incredible, and that that has. But that evolved. was a big debate. That was a, a big debate. I didn't debate. I, I, did. yeah. I was like, can you do that? Is it okay? And then we had the subtitles, and we debated that a little bit. And we have the text and the emoticons and the, yeah. and, um, the email. So all of these things, any time you would have tried them along the way, producing other shows, each one would have gotten a no. I think that Jenny was so smart, she threw them all in, so they were just like, <laughs> 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 it's yeah. an anthology, and it's like a movie every Ooh. week, and all that. So I think in do, going all in, yeah. it, it, it also was brilliant, because I think one of the other things I remember after reading the first episode after the pilot and calling Jenny just to talk about the tone and what it was, and I said, Jenny, what, what is this? Because this is so distinct and unique. And she said, it's a, it's a movie every week. Think of yeah. it as the, as the best kind of movie that you could make, you know, episodically. Because every, every episode has a different tone, you know, and it really comes from what, where Jane is in her journey. So, you know, there's going to be a very light-hearted episode, and then when she's having an amnio and is thinking about her baby, you know, that we're going to take that more seriously, you know, and we have 22 episodes, so we can do that. And, and there's, it's, there's no formula for it. That's, I think, what makes it both tricky and hopefully unique. Special. Well, there's Absolutely. a formula now, and you created it. <laughs> Get it, girl. Yeah. Yes, well, I mean, you know, I think everything from the writing to the acting to the narration to, you know, the entire process clearly is working. I mean, you guys got the first Golden Globe nomination in CW history. Yes. yes. <laughs> what was, I mean, what was that day like on set when you guys found out oh, that the show oh, had been nominated? Wow. A lot of screaming and crying. A, a lot of hugging, a lot, a lot of, of screaming. Tears. I danced. Yeah, danced. danced. You're always dancing. Stuff. I started stripping. <laughs> That's right. I, I got naked. My I didn't know what to <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. yeah. We both did. He did. Yes, we choreographed the dance together. And I, I saw them. Good. Lights off, oh. lights off in our dressing room. Yeah. That's too much. Okay, That's guys, TMI. TMI. Sorry, I think we were all. Lots of happy tears. For sure. We were all happy shocked. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't think. Yeah. I, I don't know about you guys, but I think we all. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all were hoping and praying for Gina. Yes. Right? And that was the truth because she deserves yeah. it. We all.
And I, I think I speak for everybody when I say that when you're in a scene with Gina, it makes you better. Oh, of yes. course. The way that it is. Whoa, that's a huge... No, 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 but it's true. I'll slap them. Um, but I don't think any of us realized that it was even an option yeah. for the show to get nominated. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't. So yeah. at first it I thought it was a mistake. <laughs> and I woke up, it was like you, you had I told, at yeah. least, called at least six times. It I was called five him like in the six morning. times, he didn't pick up. <laughs> <laughs> and when I finally saw it, I looked at my wife, and I'm sure you guys all have the same reaction, but like we were so emotional. Yeah. Because it's such a landmark achievement. Um, and I, I mean, I don't know if you guys want to talk about it, but it was just one of these. I was so proud of everybody. You know, it wasn't like, a, oh my God. For me, it was like a, this group of people, yeah. like we love what we do. Like we come to work and we have fun and we work hard so that like you guys can laugh and cry with us and you know, take a second away from your life and just enjoy this moment and see yourself in all, in all of us. And then to find like, you know, the, to, to be the first show for the CW ever to be nominated, wow. to see, to see this one, like, oh. as a Latina, stand up there. Uh, and, like, and, a, and a show that, like, when you, look, when you look up here and when you watch the show, you don't, like, you see the colors of the world. You know, you see unity. You see, like, a, like you don't just see one group of people. And it was just, I'm, I'm so proud of all of this. And, and I tell them this, but I just want to say it publicly. Like, this is the most wonderful group of people and the most amazing experience that, I've ever had, and I'm sure I can speak for yes. everybody when I say Oh, that. yes. Ditto. Absolutely. And then see her win? Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. We were, we, were actually, we were actually so excited about Gina when Gina won. Oh. We were on the oh, table and all. So, and the winner, and we, we were all praying. All my favorite is Jaime. Jaime is next to me. He's like, no, no, no. And then I. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like focusing, I was focusing my energy to the universe. I was like <laughs> focusing, focusing. And then Gina wins and we're like, ay, a carajo, <laughs> Happiness and, and, and then we the almost next... flipped the table. Do you yes. remember? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were Which is, the loudest no. group of people at the Golden Globe. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 we were so I ghetto. I don't think we'll be invited. We almost got thrown. <laughs> totally out. ghetto. I don't think we'll get invited again. <laughs> we were being very vocal about everything. We there, and then the next category was the best show. Mm -hmm. I, we totally I did, almost missed totally it. Totally missed yeah. it. You were like, and, uh, Gina, oh my God. And there was uh, this transpired. Yeah, well, Regina, you're the bad Gina. Okay, <laughs> when, when are we on? No? What? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, we it just, went you, fine <laughs> and we didn't uh, work. Oh, well. I, Gina won it. And I, it. It's a testament to who Gina is uh, that when she won, we like. We all won. Yeah, yeah, you couldn't have. It felt like, oh my God. Like, it, it, it was un. And from every single person here was in tears and just because of who she is and because of the energy that she brings, um, you know, to our set every day and the tone that she sets and the how hard she works, it was just. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You know, and I got lashes in. They're about to be all over my face. <laughs> you, have your, you have your concealer with you? I have my yeah, concealer. You have concealer. <laughs> Let me get some of your concealer. No, I mean the experience was magical. I mean, I remember that morning I was. Uh, I was so excited. I, I, I was so humble. I was so gracious. I, but slept on the couch. Uh, couch I, of I slept on the couch the night of the Golden right. Globes. So my parents stayed with me, and I went one bedroom. Listen, hey. <laughs> Don't be judging. I'm modest, all right. <laughs> um, but yeah, and my and my couch is really comfortable. <laughs> Whoever needs a couch to sleep on. No, I, I didn't just open the couch. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the to have the whole cast nominated meant the world to me because I don't, I. I you know, this journey has been very interesting because I am not, Jane is nothing without the cast, and that is hands down the honest truth. Like, I swear to God, there's, I, you know, I, I can't, I, yeah, I couldn't have done this alone. I do this with them every day, and it's amazing. So to, so to know that they knew, I felt like I, I felt like I was like able to, to celebrate with them that they, so they knew how much they meant to me and how this isn't just, you know, one person. This is a, This is an ensemble, and it. You know, if you don't follow Jane, you follow Raphael, or you're following Rogelio, or you follow. You know, it's such a beautiful ensemble cast. So that experience was incredible, and to have them so loving and supportive meant the absolute world to me, and it was unstoppable. But I wasn't up there by myself. Like, I wasn't. I felt them with me. I felt every girl that has ever dreamt of being something. See, this is the problem. <laughs> Somebody give her an award. Somebody
Just so I can speak. Um, no, but I, I, you will be winning an award at, in this theater one day. Yeah. It's not the street a little. It's not the street a little. I'm here too. Put up the street a little bit where she's going to win. Well, she's going to win. We're here too. She's going to win here too. I love it. The like, she's gonna win. All the We're gonna make an award show here just yes. for her. Exactly. The Jane the Virgin Awards. <laughs> Rogelio will host. <laughs> and produce and, and win. And Everything's lavender. Yes. No, anyway. All right, sorry. Go ahead, Gina. But it was um, it was that much more of an opportunity to stand there and to let people know that. There is no one way. There is no right way. There is no perfect. There is no beautiful. You are all of those things. Society loves to decide what is beautiful. Society loves to decide this is what's in and this is what's out. And we judge ourselves based on that. And I was such a, I did not fit that. And I was so afraid that because I didn't, my dreams wouldn't come true. So the fact that I was able to live this journey, I can now turn to someone and say, don't give up. Don't stop trying. Don't sleep on yourself. Because trust me, if I can do it, you can do it 10 times better. So go out there and kick some ass. <laughs> and now I need my makeup artist. <laughs> I love that. Just one thing I want to say that Gina, I think, has been recognized for more than just her talent. And I don't think people realize why, but it's because you get what you give. And what she gives is positivity, and mm -hmm. just like what she said now. And she truly lives that with us in her real life. She's a very humble person, a very down to earth, an extremely generous and compassionate person. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that because she exudes that, the universe responds yeah. in kind. Yes. With a Golden Globe or oh, yeah. with success, or whatever. <laughs> That's the whatever the case may be, she truly deserves it in more ways than anyone will ever really know, except for the people who are in her very small life, you know, her sphere. I love you, Ma. I love you, baby. Wow. 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 Awesome. Um, well, that feels like a perfect segue. We have a question from the Paley app. Uh, and, oh, God, I'm terrible Paley. at getting names. Marcellus here asks, uh, if each of you could play a different character on the show, who would it be and why? And I'm going to start with it. She is ready. Rogelio. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like I don't need to ask why, but what is it about him that you'd want to play? I just feel like there's no limits. He can do anything. There's nothing holding him back from doing anything he wants to do. And he has so much heart and he's so lovable that everything is justified and everything would be cool. I love you. Oh, fist bump from far away. <laughs> Brett, what about you? Well, I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> this bump from far away. <laughs> no, but seriously, I want to play Rogelio for sure. <laughs> great. I want to know if anybody wants to play Petra. I do. <laughs> yes! Oh, I want to play Petra. Oh. Yeah. What is I, I want to play Rogelio, too. Uh, okay. Okay. All right, he's That's getting great. too much love, right? <laughs> Thank you. Not I want to play Rogelio, too. <laughs> <laughs> No, I want to play. I want to. I actually want to kind of want to play either Red or Justin. Why? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> hey, because I want. He has to because I want to. Yeah, because he can't say Rahalia. <laughs> because I think they're, they're brilliant characters. I love them. I, I love that love triangle they have going on with Gina, and I, I, I just think oh. they're so similar, but so. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's gross. Yeah, I want to kiss Gina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, it's just a very nice uh, the, yeah, uh, yeah, Next. <laughs> that would well, be yeah. me. I want to play Petra. Why Petra? Because um, bad <laughs> girls have the most fun. Yay. Yes, they do. Hey. 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 Bad girls have a lot of fun. Bad girls. And she has a, a great time. She gets to do the comedy, the drama. She gets to be heard and evil and all those things. And it, it looks like fun. Uh, <laughs> Justin. Uh, I was going to say Rogelio, but I think I'm going to say Michael, because then I would have the support of the rest of my cast. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I would, love to play, I would love to play Sin Rostro. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be pretty dope. Nice. Wow, yeah. That would have been fun. Yeah. Is, yeah, this, be is this the bad girls have more fun for you, too? <laughs> yeah. 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 That's really in right now. Like, we lost the transparent. Maybe I could do a whole thing. <laughs> like, so many options. The world, the choices are endless. Uh, I'd love to play, I mean, I'd play any of these characters. They're awesome. <laughs> I kind of want to play Louisa, who got me knocked up. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, 
She's yeah. amazing. Yara yeah. Martinez yeah. is just a phenomenal actress. I'm just wowed by her. She has gone through such a crazy, awesome journey. And I just want to be, I don't know if I want to play her, I want to be in her mind for just like two minutes. <laughs> like, what the? <laughs> she does come back with a bang, I will say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you know, we're going to open it up to the audience now, so I'm sure we will have a lot of what's coming up questions. <laughs> uh, so if you have a question, raise your hand. Wow, yes! Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Hi, guys. Start right here in the front with this thing. Sorry. I was lucky enough to uh, see the pilot before it aired to the rest of the country when Gina and Jaime and Jenny were at uh, Paley Center in Beverly Hills doing uh, the, Paul, the fall preview. So I'm one of the few people who could say I loved this show before it ever uh, even aired. Yeah. Yeah. What she All right. <laughs> and I want to um, just say, in addition to the Golden Globe nominations and, and win, um, how has being in the show and playing these roles um, changed your lives oh. or affected you since it came out? Um, well, personally, I can say I've never had to explain so much that I'm actually nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like people expect me to be strangling small animals on the street. <laughs> and when I um, smile at <laughs> people who watch the show, they go, oh my god, you're nice. I've never had people so surprised by that before, <laughs> personally. Well, that means you're doing a good job. Oh, yeah, thank you. Really cool. I, I try to take it as a compliment. It's really cool <laughs> yes, to see her react to like when people hate her. <laughs> yeah. She's such a sweet, a very funny person. So she's always like, no. <laughs> not that bad. I'm very defensive. I get the, very defensive about defensive. Petra. <laughs> he attacks Petra a lot, and um, oh. I'm like, well, not okay. That, that was badly. No. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, in a scene where we, we argue because we're both very protective of our characters, and I defend Petra a lot. <laughs> Anyone else? The, how the show has changed your life? Oh, um, everybody thinks that I'm a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. Yvonne, <laughs> yes. I am not. Single. She's oh, single an and 30 years old. Oh. And a brilliant singer an actress, and dancer. Huh? And what? what? Brilliant singer and dancer. You have the room next to mine, so I know. <laughs> so, you know, people think that I am a real abuela. <laughs> and, I'm, I'm, and I love it that people, because that means that we're playing the part convincingly, you know, yes. convincingly, and I appreciate it. But I'm a little bit crazier than Abuela. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing, you know? Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll say the show is definitely magic because somehow uh, I'm having a baby in real life at the same time. <laughs> Yay! I was thinking how that works yeah. when we finish the panel. I was so used to the artificial the method <laughs> of it. But uh, so my life currently is 24-7 pregnancy. Right. <laughs> Between her belly bump that's growing and, and my beautiful wife's. But the nice thing is I now know all the techniques and the apps and all of these things. <laughs> and uh, I was prepared. <laughs> Perfect. Is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, Anyone? Uh, 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 hello? Uh, Testing? Okay. Um, well, I was going to say that the show changed my life because, first of all, I get to go to work and do what I love to do every day for the first time. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And also... Yeah. Um, no, I mean. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying. I'm done with that. Uh, I and got also, you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, these people are, are, they've inspired me to become a better person, and, I, and I'm more, like, I just feel, because when you're surrounded by people like these people all the time, you start judging yourself, and you go, <laughs> how come you're not as good as them at life? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been, I've been trying really hard to be better, and they've inspired me to do that, so that's how I'm, uh, that's, that's how it's affected my life. You're getting so much better. Getting you're better. amazing. Thanks, very, man. very good at life. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, Fantastic. Is, is that, yeah. So, to me, it's a dream. It's a dream to be here with this beautiful, talented group of people. I think we're very blessed to be working. And you will hear this a lot from us. We, we praise each other a lot because we really, really love each other in a genuine way. Not because we're in first season and then we're going to become monsters of third season. And we're gonna... <laughs> no, we really, we, oh, really? <laughs> no, we really love each other. And to be working with such a, beautiful group of human beings. It is just a blessing, a blessing. 
we share the same moral, the same work ethics, the same values. We like to be on time. We know our own, not always know our lines. But uh, we know our lines. Not speaking. always on time. We usually don't. <laughs> But uh, no, but it's, it's just lovely. And being here with Jenny and, you know, working here in, in this country and doing a mainstream show, it's just to me, it's a dream come true. Dream yeah. come true. Um, the way it's changed my life is um, it, it's changed me from being a full-time mom to a, a, an away mom. Mm. Um, my children are in New York with my husband, and I'm here most of the time. And that was uh, a big sacrifice that I had to make in order to pursue my dream. Um, but I was looking at it as the bigger picture. Uh, I can put my kids through college. Um, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, also, just living by example, the best way to teach is to teach by example. And I feel like, you know, choosing to be an actor is one of the craziest ideas in the world. <laughs> and um, what I've shown my children is that there are no blocks except for what you decide are the blocks. And so children, you know, you know moving to another state and, and having to be away from your children doesn't necessarily have to be a block. Um, it could be a temporary block, but, you, you know, you can blow that out of the water and, and make it work somehow and um, take risks, step out of your comfort zone and, and go for something that is really, truly your passion and maybe just maybe something good might come out of it. And it has, and, and I'm so happy to be here. And so now I'm gonna be moving my kids because we got a second season. Yay! Yeah. So my kids will be, will be living a California life now, and, and, and I think that's a good thing too. You know, they get to experience New York and all the wonderful things that it has to offer, and now they get to experience um, what it would be like to live in California. And, <laughs> you know, see their mom pursue their dreams, so why not? So that's how it's affected me. Awesome. <laughs> you know, I just have to say, if you guys maybe in between seasons one and two want to go like on a motivational speaking tour, <laughs> I feel like it would sell out. I'm like, I can do so many things now. <laughs> I think we have time for just a couple more questions. This, yep, there, turn up, there's a mic behind you, sir. <laughs> go for it. What's up? Hey. Thank Hello. you, my name is Jordan. I would like to talk about uh, with all due respect to the characters up there, Aaron's character, we're living in a very turmoil time with what's going on in Ferguson and Obama's great speech in Selma and, uh, you know, stand your ground in Florida. And I was wondering about how you came to the idea of bringing Aaron's character in and religion with Jainism and the need for that, you know, promoting peace and nonviolence in this turmoil time. We really need that. What's, how's that going to grow? Because I believe that if you promote that, I think people will listen, you have the platform, and hopefully the you know, violence will uh, certainly lessen in this country, and we need that, we need peace. And I think that's the platform that you as uh, creators of the show can really bring, and how's that gonna move forward with his yeah. character? Well, all the it, you know, it, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, we, we uh, you know, is that something that we obviously need? I, we try, I would say our whole show is the underpinnings of it. it it's an optimistic show and it hopes to be a compassionate show. So even in terms of that's why you understand who Petra is, because we try to be compassionate to her. And Aaron, I will say, is, you know, there's gonna be some complications. <laughs> I don't know that he's gonna, you know, yeah. be giving a speech in Selma. <laughs> um, because, because we're still in a telenovela. But, um, but what I do think, you know, is um, we try to bring a lot of different people and influences, religion and all of that, and we try to accept it all and, and uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people hadn't heard of Jainism. So, you know, that's something. People will look it up and yeah. think, oh, wow, this is a peaceful, spiritual. So, um, you know, that's what we try to do. And awesome. Hope, yeah. Word. Thank you so much. Uh, how about this lady right here? Hi. Um, I'd like to call myself Jane's biggest fan. Because, Ooh, yay! You know, uh, I absolutely love the show. And one of the reasons why I love the show is because growing up in Brooklyn, New York, um, I had absolutely no role models in television to see, no one that looked like me, yeah. um, whether it was from the things that I did or just my skin color. Um, and when I saw Gina, I just cried, you know. Um, Girl, why are you going to do this to me again, though? <laughs> I thought we were past this. <laughs> that means um, everything. You have no idea. That's what I live for. I, I 
genuinely just want to thank you, Jenny, and I want to thank all the cast because every day that I watch the show, you somehow, you make me cry, but they're tears of joy, you know, because somehow you capture a culture so well. And I think no one has done a justice like that. I mean, oh. not Univision. Yeah. Wow. Not. So awesome. Oh. Oh. Not Telemundo, not anyone. Um, and I'm so proud that my little cousins can grow up and know that they have a role model in Gina and that you know, Abuela Alba reminds us all of our grandma. Always, home. right? So, <laughs> That's thank us. you so much. Thank you. But I do, I do have a question for Jenny. Whatever you are. My question oh. is that, you know, you've done this so beautifully, and the more I read about you, you're not Latina. No. You know? <laughs> so, but she could be Latina, what right? You right? That's the point. <laughs> yeah. Wait. So yeah. to me. Someone that I am in the media and I dream of being an executive in the entertainment and I want to replicate what you're doing. My question is, how have you so authentically and organically done something so beautifully that I hope we can do that for Latinos and so many other underrepresented races? Yep. Cool. Yay. I set out to create very specific characters, you know, and uh, create a situation where they were specific and the things that they wanted were specific. And I think the more specific you get with characters, the less they become stereotypical and uh, like something you've seen. That was one thing. I tried to, I thought about Jane a lot. And, you know, like I've said this before, but I have more trouble writing men than I do ha have, you know, a 24 year old, uh, very driven, type A woman who wants to be a writer. You know, I understand that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, and then, and then I thought about, you know, who's this 24-year-old virgin, and from that I, I started to think about who her mother was and who her grandmother was, and, um, you know, we all have, you know, friends that are multicultural. You know, I've been in, in, in houses where, you know, when they don't want me to understand, there's another language spoken. <laughs> uh, you know, so, it, and it's about, you know, I think just writing characters and writing people um, and not writing race, but at the same time, understanding that that is one of many components that makes a character, you know, um, their ethnicity, but their socioeconomic standing and their religious, uh, you know, how religious they are and all of those things. And I tried to really just make Jane specific and, and I try to make all of our characters specific um, and, and find the, the, the points where we all relate and, that's where, that's how I approached it. And then, you know, I have this great, you know, it, when we had, you know, I remember we had our first table read and we had, uh, you know, uh, Gina and Andrea talking uh, back to Abuela in, in Spanish. And, you know, there was a moment where I was like, should, should Andrea be replying in Spanish? And, and they were like, nope, this is exactly how it is in my family. So that's a big part is relying on the people who have the specific experience and asking the questions and hiring, you know, having staff that, that has, uh, you know, Latinas on staff and all of that is important. Um, and then it's just really trying to write character and really loving your characters, I think. I think, yeah, she hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny cracked the code. I felt the exact same way when I read it. I was like, this is really on point. This is kind of crazy how on point it is. And I've been talking as an actress and as a woman of color, I have been talking about this subject so much because it's such a, it seems like it's such a, Algorithm, like people are just like, how do we do it? How do we get into the Latino mind? And, you know, <laughs> like it's different. And and then I was like, oh, is it different? Like, is my mind different? Because I don't think my mind is different. <laughs> um, but that's what it is at the end of the day. It does seem like this big subject to conquer. But I think that there's like two parts to it. There's one, you need to write for human beings, and that goes for any underrepresented uh, ethnicity because we're human. We all want the same things. We all want love and success and yes, you know, and we're afraid of failure and, you know, we want people to like us. We, we all want the same things at the end of the day. We're all afraid of death and, you know, some of you aren't, and that's crazy to me because I'm scared of shit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but meaning like, you know, like that you write for a human being. Like, that's cracking the code right there for any ethnicity, I think. Just write for a human being, cast the best actor. Don't cast, you know, like, Sadly, this like casting blind is very true. Cast the best actor and I bet you they will explode. That is what happens. You know, the cream rises to the top. Like, do not be afraid to do that and to branch out if we're talking about networks. Secondly, if I have a moment, because I'm gonna do it. 
Yeah. The Latino community here in this country is, is comprised of multiple cultures. Yeah. And so the industry says, let's hire a Latino. And then Latinos say, well, you want a Mexican and I'm Puerto Rican. You want a Guatemalan and I'm from El Salvador. You want a Cuban and I'm Dominican. So we need to really, right? We need to have the conversation of, if they're gonna put us under one umbrella, now I'm speaking to the Latino community in this country, that means your ancestors spoke Spanish, right? That's what makes you a Latino. Yeah. If we want to be considered and we want to show and use our power to the fullest, we need to unite. They see us as one community, we need to be one community. You know why? Because we all share the same struggle. We do. And so, and celebrate our differences, and so, but be one community. Because that's what we do, that's what we do as human beings. So we celebrate each other, we celebrate, each other's culture, we celebrate each other's religion, but we also unite as human beings. So let's do that. Let's use our power as women, as Latinos, as whatever subculture that you identify with, and then at the same time celebrate being a human. And that's what she did. She wrote a story for a human. And now Latinos, we can unite and get our viewership just like Empire, because where are you at? 54 million plus. Let's watch this one. <laughs> Jane the Virgin, inspirational speaking. I'm tour telling you, is motivational speaking. Starts now. Yeah. 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 This summer. So well. Um, I can't think of a better place to say thank you so much uh, to the amazing yeah. cast. Yeah. Thank you, Yahoo and Paley. Have an amazing night, everybody.